today's topic discussion will be um, introducing Sally Reich from Noob to Nagios in 90 Days. Uh, Sally will uh, share her experiences, tips and tricks for others who are just getting started with Nagios, and even show how Nagios might be applied to some non-obvious situations that only a beekeeper would think of, and I'll let her explain more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Sally. <laughs> and I, do, uh, I also do ask that uh, anybody who has questions, uh, this is a two-part segment today, so uh, please hold off your questions until each speaker is done with their presentation. Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, I appreciate uh, your interest. And uh, as I'm Sally Reich, and uh, I'm a beekeeper. I do other things, um, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to try to learn uh, Nagios. So um, I was uh, in the IT world specifically. I was doing tech support for a small company that made uh, broadcast cards for the installed sound and uh, broadcast industry. And um, I, I left, it really wasn't my thing. And uh, I wanted to work more with bees. I mentor people with bees. And I'm, at the time, was also thinking of going back to school. Um, I am not a programmer. I am not a Unix geek. I am not a sysadmin. So, this, this was a, an interesting learning experience for me. So um, it's a little bit on how, how I went from nothing to Nagios and how can I apply it to a beehive. So why did I decide to do this? So I came to the Nagios conference 2012 with my significant other, Eric Lloyd, who's right here. And I want to give a shout out to his 10.30 uh, um, talk tomorrow. So go to that. Um, and I met Ethan at, at the reception uh, and in 2012, and I, I, he asked, why are you here? And I said, oh, I'm just here to hang out with, with Eric. And, uh, but everyone was so enthusiastic about Nagios, I couldn't believe it. And I said, hey, maybe, maybe it's fun to learn it, so maybe I want to learn. And, uh, and then later on, I met other people. We were talking, and when they found out I was a beekeeper, of course, the discussion turned to, how can we use Nagios for a beehive? Well, I didn't make it to last year's conference, but here I am now. So, learning Nagios. Eric became my sysadmin, since I'm not one, and he set me up with a virtual machine. I started with instant Nagios starter, and um, I, I started reading it, and then I stopped. I started reading it again, thinking I'm, I'm a complete newbie. I put my mind in that frame and I said, what wouldn't I know about if I was a complete newbie? I ended up taking 384 highlights and notes in a thin little book. And this is just highlights some of the, the notes. I'd color coded it for different reasons and you can see all the little note things that I have. And those notes, again, I wrote it as if what could be added to a book for a complete newbie to, to help them understand things better? So I followed Guthrie's book, and, and obviously, you know, th some things were out of date, and um, I had to ask my sysadmin for some help. Then I went to nagios.com and got the quick start, and I followed that. There was obviously some learning opportunities, I call it, for me <laughs> there. Um, and then I followed the uh, monitoring publicly available services at that link. VI, I hate it. <laughs> so, so I did have some slight experience with Pico years ago. So I said, I know I could do that. So, so I installed Pico and uh, used that. And then I added a host and service and woohoo! I'm up and running. <laughs> so. Then I thought, is there an easier way? And I've heard about XI. I've heard about XI from Eric and just in general. So how do I do that? One command, and it was done. And uh, I used the configuration wizard, much easier. Um, added a HTTP service and some other things. And bam, I am monitoring. And I added notifications. 
I went to my email to look for those notifications. I didn't see any. So I'm like, what the heck is going on? And looking through, I found out that enable notifications is not checked. And I, I would think it, it should be checked by default. I mean, that, that's just me, but I, I thought that was kind of weird. So, <laughs> lots of info here, but um, some tips and tricks. So, uh, like I said, the, the VI editor I didn't like. And um, um, basically, you, you'll see this online, but just, just go straight to Nagios XI. So now I have XI in chapter two, or excuse me, chapter one of the Instant Nagio Starter. It says, you can use it to monitor virtual, virtually anything. So I said, what can I do with a beehive? Most hobbyist beekeepers keep bees for their honey. The bees go out and collect nectar. They store the nectar in honeycomb. They cure the nectar. They evaporate it down to about 17% water. Then they cap it. And that capped honey, or that capped nectar, is now honey. So the weight of the hive would be the obvious thing to start monitoring. And it's very important because you don't want to have not enough room for your bees. Otherwise, they will swarm. So what else could I monitor besides that? And um, I thought of uh, there's temperature and humidity out outside of the hive, the sunlight, wind speed. Inside the hive, if there's water or, or condensation, humidity, the sound level is important too because, especially in the winter, is there sound in the hive? It, it, are my bees alive? Um, as far as the hive itself, whether it's tipped over, whether some intruders are trying to get into it or not, and um, and then, of course, you'll need to monitor the monitoring devices and sensors. So specifically, um, what Nagios could alert me to, or any beekeeper that decides to do something like this, is whether it's cold or hot outside for a long time, whether there's a hurricane or flood coming, uh, whether there's mice, skunks, or raccoons around, uh, whether the top blew off or someone came and just decided to mess around with your hive. Um, one thing is um, the, uh, whoops, the fence for bears. Now, right where I live, I don't have to worry about bears, but 40 miles from me, I have beekeeper friends that bears did it get, break through their, their electric fence and did get their bees. So that's an important thing, depending on where you are. So there's other things to monitor that I wasn't even thinking of. I was talking to Ethan last night, and he asked me about bee mites. <laughs> so this is a bee mite, Varroa destructor. And yes, just like the name implies, you do not want these with your bees. And there's a close-up of uh, the Varroa mite. And you can see them. They're, they're big enough that you don't need a microscope to see them on the bees. And it, it, it's analogous to if you had a dinner plate attached to yourself. That's how big these, these mites are. And the problem with these mites is that, uh, whoops, um, they, they make, they sap the bee of energy because they're sucking on the bee's blood. And it will make the bee susceptible to bee diseases. And you can see hives quickly just die because of it because of having the mites. The thing that I'm not sure about, and I'm hoping someone out there can help me with this, is how do I test for the mites? So Ethan said he knew he read about the mites can fall down onto the, that's the bottom board right here of a hive. And it's specifically a screened bottom board. And so there's a screen on top of this, but you pull this piece of, it's usually like a light cardboard out, and you place something sticky on it, like um, Vaseline or there's some special insect sticky stuff, 
and you can treat your bees with, with a mite, miticide, or some beekeepers do uh, a powdered sugar shake throughout their hive, which is supposed to be more natural and won't hurt the bees as much. But here's the problem with it. As you can see, it can get really, really dirty with other stuff. It can get dirty with um, pieces of wax from the hive. Uh, if a bee dies and they get the bee out, maybe a leg falls off in there. So it's not just a matter of the bee, of the, of the um, Varroa destructor landing on there. So I don't know what the threshold would be or how, how easy or hard it will be to try to figure out how to monitor this. So again, if any of you out there have any ideas for me, great. So what might a nagiosified hunt, uh, hive look like? So <laughs> we have, we have um, the wall. We have the, the scale here, which is, again, the most important thing, a mouse sensor, water sensor, a, possibly a webcam. This is attached to the data Raspberry Pi, also the weather station and things like that. The Arduino, Arduino would take care of tilt sensors, temp sensors, humidity. Um, all these things would go towards to a Nagios Pi interwebs and to the happy beekeeper. Obviously, what's not on here is things like power, you know, so do I need solar, what, what will I do? So again, any ideas, suggestions would be great. Um, so I really think it would be cool to try to put together Nagios Beehive. And I'm thinking about doing maybe a Kickstarter to get the equipment and peripherals and weatherproofing and also, you know, to pay for the outsourcing for the electrical and other help that I might need. Uh, maybe I can get one at a, at a um, um, maker, maker space or something like that. Maybe I could get some people to help me, or maybe you guys out there can help me. Uh, I also created a Pinterest board to start putting together all the pieces that I might use. And um, thanks for listening. Um, I, I probably have more tips and tricks that I didn't put on there, so you can talk to me later. Um, there's still a lot for me to learn. Again, just go to Nagios XI. You can, you can use, you have, you can use seven free, you can use it on seven hosts for free. Yeah, that's it. Um, so it's, it's a good way for people to practice and, and learn and for hobbyists to, to play with, like myself. So, and updating the quick start guides as if a very, very brand new newbie were reading it. I think it would be cool to do that. It may not be necessary because most of the people using it are probably Unix geeks and sysadmins, which again, I'm not, but, but maybe, maybe it would be helpful. Um, if any of you have advice, help, tips, please talk to me during the conference. Um, I kind of envision this as a community thing. So I'll, I'll have it at my home, but I, I really want a lot of help and, and um, you know, I just I want a community doing this. I think it'll, it will be really fun. Uh, speaking of advice, I'm gonna give a shout out to Trevor McDonald because he's doing a talk tomorrow at 11.30, monitoring the physical world with Nagios and Arduino. So I think that'll be very helpful for me, and you guys might want to check that out too. And on top of that, Jim, back there, after me, will be doing a tips and tricks on XI, so I think that'll be good for me too. And uh, lastly, anyone have questions or answers for me? Or do you want to know more about keeping honeybees, and when you walked in, you might have seen my uh, iPad there showing a slideshow of beekeeping pictures, um, just to you know, see, let you know what it's all about. Are, are there any beekeepers in here right now? No? Nope. Okay, well maybe, maybe, maybe you'll become bee, beekeepers after this. Ah, so, if, if, uh, if you think of something after the, after the conference, 
email me at sally at frommyhive.com. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Sally. Uh, if there's anybody with any questions, I believe we have a quick five minutes just uh, to go over something for Sally. If anybody has anything they would Or like answers, or, or has suggestions for what I can do. So one of the things that you had talked about was Nagios Pi and some other Pi device. What do those do? Uh, those would collect the specific, um, let me go back. Those would collect the speci specific information. So I believe, again, I'm, I'm new to all this stuff. So I believe an Arduino would be best used to collect the sensor information here, but the Raspberry Data Pi here should be good to collect the weather information, uh, light sensor scale, things like that, as well as the Nagios Pi is going to collect the information from the Arduino and the Data Pi. What are they? Are they running a computer? Yes. Yeah, they're like little little mini computers. Well, they've got they've got an interface on them, so they must plug into something. Okay. It's like oh. <laughs> so the idea behind the the different Raspberry Pis. So if anybody's not familiar, it's a credit card sized full computer, um, Ethernet, video, all that stuff, USB. So there's an Ethernet port on there. There's USB ports. There's data I/O ports. Um, some of that would be useful to run the sensors. Some of it would be more useful to just gather the data and run Nagios on a second Raspberry Pi, which could then this connect to either a Wi-Fi infrastructure or something else that would be connected to the interwebs, good old interwebs, um, for doing the monitoring interface. So, so the, you can have these. You ha you can have little cases for these, so they're they'll be sitting out there. So that's another thing. A lot of the stuff I'll need to figure out how to weatherproof and just make it so it's also tamper-proof. I don't know if a raccoon or a skunk or something might decide to, hey, ch check it out or try chewing it up or something. And again, the, the other thing is power. So my first thought is solar power. If you guys have any ideas, talk to me so I can be a happy beekeeper. <laughs> device which has like uh, various sensors in it yeah so probably it might be easier for you rather than I making your own ecosystem of pies and Arduino so they have like an inbuilt uh, device which probably you can use like they might have like they have like multiple sensors in it they, it was like presentation just before this one <laughs> uh, we got about uh, two minutes remaining here <laughs> <laughs> so, so you think it can be used in this, in this context? Awesome. So, when you have a problem in the beehive, what kind of response time do you need? Is it minutes or hours or? It it, uh, it depends on what the problem is, and, th and th thank you. That's a good question. So, um, if the the main thing is if there's water in the hive or if you're seeing if you're being notified that light is coming in then I know something is really drastically wrong and I need to get there to the hive ASAP because that means it, it either tipped over or the wind blew the top off which is not unheard of even when you put rocks and stuff on top of the on top of the hive um, so most of it is yes you should get out there as soon as possible Thank you. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Sally Reich. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time.